Okay, in this video we're going to talk about secondary animation and uh, we're going to show how you can sort of uh, give a little bit of extra to our scene. Absolutely. We're going to take our scene, which so far, you know, we got this ball bouncing across the room mm -hmm. and the ball looks pretty rigid, you know? Right, he's he, not really deforming at all. That's right, he yeah. holds his shape consistently from one end of the animation to the other, even though he's bouncing pretty hard against the ground. Yeah. We're going to loosen things up, make him look a little more cartoony. Oh, I like that cartoony. And uh, he's going to kind of squash down when he hits the ground and stretch up once he goes up into the air. Ah, so we're going to talk about stretch and squash. That's right, and what we've decided to do is kind of pull away and come into a separate uh, video here and show you how you can approach squash and stretch in a couple of different ways. Sure. And then we'll kind of give you sort of a pros and cons of, uh, of using each of the two ways. And real quick, there are actually two different ways to do it. You can use the select and squash uh, transform tool up here, or mm -hmm. you can actually apply a modifier. Okay. So first of all, what exactly does stretch and squash look like? Oh, well... Why don't we show him? You can grab an okay, object, cool. and stretch it out, and squash it down. Sure, yeah. It's kind of yeah. neat. So I'm going to grab a sphere. Mm -hmm. I'll turn on base to pivot so he's kind of uh, sitting on the floor by default. Okay. And I'll dra drag another sphere and create him as well. And like a good 3DS Max user, I'm going to go ahead and give them names. Call him Zach. <laughs> and I'll call him Bill. All Aww. right. Yeah, so Zach and Bill hanging out. Very cool. Um, so now the first, uh, well, let's uh, go ahead and give Zach a little stretch and squash. Yeah. So we're going to use the uh, transform tool up here. So I'm actually going to use our scale fly out. Yeah, have any idea how uncomfortable this is making me right now? <laughs> That's all right. I need to shake things up a little bit, you know. Okay. So we're going to select and squash up here. So now you can actually take the uh, the Z um, coordinate as well mm -hmm. or, uh, over here, and I can actually stretch them out. And squash him down. There you go. You can actually notice he's actually uh, scaling about his pivot. Right. Yeah, and since we've already created uh, the sphere using base to pivot, that actually puts the pivot at the bottom or at the floor, as you will. Well, just as a real quick example, you mm -hmm. could go ahead and go into the hierarchy tab for just a moment, and you could just center up the pivot. for. Mm -hmm. just, just go ahead and do it real quick. Sure, why not? And just show him the difference that you'll get. So... If you center the object with effect pivot only on, you switch that off. Now when you squash and stretch, notice, of course, as uh, you guys are already well aware, you scale from that pivot location. Right. And if you look up here in the front viewport, it's almost like he's uh, he's kind of... Afraid of the ground. Right. It's like when he squashes, he's jumping up like, oh, I can't touch the ground. Right. And then so when he stretches, he's actually going through our floor, which does not look realistic at all. That's right. So what we're going to do is just undo that, and we'll leave the pivot down here on the floor, where sure. now when we squash and stretch up and down, you'll see he's just kind of planted there on the ground no matter mm -hmm. what he does. Right. Which is yeah. great for us. As so he should be. This is one way to approach squash and stretch. You can animate this way. Sure. Uh, we could, like, if you want to actually just create a quick uh, animation using yeah. this. I'll turn on auto key. Mm -hmm. I'll go to 10. Stretch them out real nice. Mm -hmm. Go to 20. And now I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, select these, set these values back to 100%. Okay. Let's go ahead and type in exact values there, and that brings his scale back to uh, the default. As an alternative, you could grab that keyframe at frame zero and just clone it up to frame 20. That's true. Yeah, very handy. So now if you just kind of... That's fine. Well, okay, if you want to do a second time, that's all good, too. So, and uh, I will go ahead and... Sl uh, I'm going to shift-drag our key. Uh -huh. Holding down shift, of course. <laughs> the <you> correct <laughs> key is very important. <laughs> and like you said, very yeah. easy. So now you can actually see... Wah. 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 So there you go. We're wow. stretching and we are squashing. Yeah. And this is just using a uh, version of the scale tool. Yeah, I'm actually going to change my range to 40 because we really only need 40 frames of animation. I know it's really not necessary for this example, but I just like you know adjusting my range uh, you know, just uh, to show the animation that we need and nothing more. It's all good. Yeah. So now I'm going to go ahead and show the second way to do a squash and stretch. Mm -hmm. I'm going to apply the stretch modifier to Bill. Okay. Now I'm feeling uncomfortable. So now I'm going to go to the modifier list, uh, scroll down to stretch, go ahead and uh, put that baby on there. And um, now we're going to go ahead and uh, you can see here that he's stretching Yep. and he's squashing. Yes, he is. Very cool. And... Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm, I kind of like the way that looks. Um, you know, of course, you have the ability to um, change the shape of the stretch uh, modifier's gizmo, if yep. you will. But, um, you know, I kind of like the way he's looking by default, sure. and uh, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. So uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, give Bill some animation. So I'm going to go to Auto Key. I'm going to go to Frame 10, where Zach is already doing his stretch. And I'm going to move Bill out and stretch him as well. 
And uh, interesting how, you know, it looks a little bit different yeah, there. Yeah, you do get two different styles of behavior mm-hmm. here, where the uh, the modifier is actually going to give you a little bit of pinching in in the middle as you start to stretch out. Right. Where And you won't really get that when you use uh, select and squash. Right. So now I'm going to go to frame 20, and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, we'll... Uh, just zero it out. Exactly. Zero out that stretch, just making mm-hmm. sure everything's looking good. And then I'll go to frame uh, 30, and now I'm going to squash him down. And I'm going to move the spheres and separate them a little bit. I was going to say, no, I mean. no commentaries on the Bill and Zach spheres somehow merging. Well, we're moving this guy way out here now. <laughs> yeah, that's a little scary. We should have come up with different names, I think. But, <laughs> All right, but okay, so, so now we have our two spheres. I'm going to go ahead and hit G to hide our grid, Alt W to maximize our viewport, Q to deselect, and then I'm going to uh, deselect both objects in the scene, hit rewind and play. And now we have uh, two uh, characters doing a cartoony... Now, obviously, there's going to be some... Uh, factors to take into account when you decide which of these two methods you want to employ to squash and stretch an object. Right. Uh, first and foremost is just the basic behavior you see, where, you know, when you stretch up on one, you get a little bit of inward pinching in the mm-hmm. center, and uh, when you're just using the scale tool, you don't really get that, so you might like that a little better. Right. At the same time, later on, when you go to try to create, you know, a variety of controls based on this, scale is working in three axes. Right. Even if you're just using the uh, the scale controller, mm-hmm. which, uh, you know, as we as you guys saw earlier, only has one real input. It doesn't have, you know, like scale X, scale Y, scale Z. If you want to do that, you need to put a scale X, Y, Z controller on there. you got to go back and review the uh, controller video if you need to. Right. And if we actually look at the select and squash modifier, it's actually moving in one... If you actually look down at your coordinate display, you're increasing the percentage of your Z scale while simultaneously simultaneously decreasing the percentage of your X and Y scales. That's right. Which means you're actually having to key three separate attributes at the same time. That's right. Three different things are being animated all at the same time, where if you use the modifier, you only have one thing that you have to control. Right. Which can be a lot easier when you're setting up control systems. Right. You only have one curve to look at, one curve to tweak, and Max is only having to animate one thing. That's right. So, you know, again, just take these factors into account. One, do you like the way one looks over the other? Mm -hmm. Two, think about animating ahead of time. Is it going to be easier to adjust curves on... Uh, one thing or three things, do you mind having to adjust three curves? If you're fine doing it, then don't worry about it. Right, and one thing we can do, if you want to uh, finesse the look of our uh, stretch modifier at all, mm-hmm. you could actually come into this gizmo. I'm going to go uh, bring it back our four view, bring back our grid down here. And now if we actually look at this gizmo, we actually, this gizmo is a, a controllable, um, we can actually adjust the scale of this gizmo. Okay. We can move it around, we can rotate it. It's just like another object that we have control over. You can think of a gizmo on a modifier as that modifier's area of effect. Right. It's like, what, what is it influencing? It's influencing everything that's inside it. Right. So now if you go to scale, you can actually increase it up a little bit. And uh, actually, we're doing a squash and uh, select and squash. Let's go back to <laughs> our uniform to scale. Uniform, yeah. And now you can actually see you can you can uh, change the shape of it a little bit. You can right. stretch it out a little so bit if you more. Don't like that pinching in, you right? Can you can actually that. bring it down. If, yeah, as soon as you scale it down so that the uh, object falls outside the gizmo, notice he starts to lose some of that uh, stretching right. and <laughs> it kind of starts to get multiplied. Yeah, kind of cool and crazy. So because of all this, you have a lot more customizability. In, uh, in terms of using a modifier over just using the scale tool. That's right. So uh, for all of these reasons, when we go to actually animate our scene, we're going to be using the stretch modifier, and we're going to show you guys how you can animate your existing scene using the stretch modifier in the next video. Right. And uh, there's Bill adjusting the gizmo. And, yeah, uh, just again, having a little fun here. Right, right. We'll probably be end up, we'll end up adjusting the gizmo and the center a little bit. We'll talk more about that in the next video. Sure. I think that's going to wrap things up for this video, however, so thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone.